But November is one of our favorite months here at church because we don't have a ton of traditions. But one of the things that's kind of become a tradition for us is this Be Rich initiative. It really is more than just a teaching series. It is, a, it is an initiative to unleash generosity on our community surrounding all of our locations here um, at our church. And what's real cool um, is it's kind of based in this one passage of scripture uh, where it says to be rich in good works. And so that's our whole aim. We just wanna be rich in good works. We wanna unleash a flood of good works uh, on our communities and particularly on those uh, who are in need around our uh, locations. He says, we know what real love is. We know what real love is. If you are a Christian, if you're a life changed by Christ, you've experienced it. You've been transfixed by it. You've, you've touched it. You've tasted it, that real love. Because Jesus gave up his life for us. In other words, John says, if you want to start talking about what it means to love others, what it means to be rich in good works, you have to start. The catalyst is the love of God. You have to start there. That that's where it's Genesis. That's where it all is. The source is from. And there's two really powerful words in this statement that I just want to pay attention to real quick. And the first one is love and the other is gave. You ever thought about how much those two words are always tied together? The love is always generous. The love isn't stingy. The love is, is it, it just gives and gives and gives. Part of what John says, if you're serious about loving others, if you're, you know, if you're a follower of Jesus and you're wanting to love in this way, then it starts with remembering that God at God's core is generous. That God is a giving God most displayed and most clearly displayed in entering into this world and giving his very life for us. And he gave his life, not because he had to, and not begrudgingly, and not because someone forced his hand, and not full of contempt, and not like, a, I gotta go do this for these people now. It wasn't like that. He gave his life willingly out of love for you and for me. John says, if you want to start a conversation about what it means to be rich in good works, if you want to start a conversation about what it means to love others, you got to start here if you're a Christian about what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And John says, once we get this, this has implications for us because if that's true, that affects the way we live. Because look what he goes on to say. I love this. He says, so we, like in light of that, because of that, since Jesus Christ has done that, so we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. John says, in light of God's love, the response that God is looking for is that we would love others. Not that we would turn more of our love towards God, but rather that we would turn our love towards others. And the reason why, this is so important, the reason why is because when we love others, we are in fact loving God. We are turning our heart, hearts towards God when we love everyone that he's created in his image. One way of saying it, and it's a phrase that's kind of made its way through our Be Rich initiatives in the past. But man, I just hope it gets burned into our hearts. Is that the most appropriate response to the extravagant love of God is to love others extravagantly. That that's always the most appropriate response to the extravagant love of God. It's to love others extravagantly. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Almost like John begins to drill down saying, you, you wanna get practical about what it means to be rich in good works and to love in this way, a love that, that lays aside what you hold valuable to bring value to others? Well, maybe it just comes down to how, what you do with your stuff, your resources. It, I read this 
you know, verse. And, and on one hand, I don't know if you're like this you know, or not, but on one hand, that's very challenging. On the other hand, I'm really glad because there feels like there's a loophole in this verse. And it's that word right there, enough. Because in some ways I read that and go, if someone has enough, and I'm sitting there going, well, I'm not sure I really have enough money to live well. Feels like a, it feels like a loophole in some ways. Like we can get, I can get off of this one, right? And the reason why is because our evaluation on whether or not we truly have enough, it's totally subjective. You ever notice that we never compare whether or not what we have right now at this season of life is enough compared to what we had 10 years ago? Do you remember 10, 15 years ago? Do you remember what you made then? Do you remember the car you drove then? Some of you are like, yeah, I wish, you regret, right? You remember that? Do you remember how that was enough then? But it would never be enough now? This is what we do. We, we, we don't think we have enough because we compare what we have now to what we want in the future, never to what we used to have. And so enough is subjective. Enough works on a sliding scale in some ways. Because we never compare our enough, we always compare our enough to someone else's. And when we don't think, like when we get, I don't know, like, uh, you know, we're subtly just kind of sucked into this idea that what we have is not enough. That is when a scarcity mentality sets in. Like if we're convinced that what we have is not enough, we will begin to see the world through a lens of, of scarcity. In other words, if there is a limited amount of goods and resources out there and I better grab mine and take mine and hold on to mine because I don't know if I'm gonna have it tomorrow. That's scarcity mindset. And when we live that way, we have forgotten the fundamental truth about God, that God is generous and that God will always give us what we need when we care for those who are in need. Love, if you are a follower of Jesus, that loving others, it is not conceptual. It's not an ideal to strive for. Love for others is not, it's not sentimentality. It's not even a feeling. That love for others is a choice. It is a deliberate action that we take on behalf of someone else to lay aside what we hold valuable, to bring value to their life. It displays itself in concrete actions, not just thinking, not just intentions, not just feelings. And it moves and acts on behalf of someone else, particularly those who are in need. And I think that's why he ends this little passage that we've been reading with these words. He says, so dear children, the very next sentence, Let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Let, let's not merely talk about it. Let's not merely say that we love each other. Let's show the truth by our actions. Do you see the movement that John has done in these few verses right here? where he's taken us, this journey he's taken us on about what it means to love in this way. Do you remember the very, uh, at the very beginning, that first verse that we read, it says, we know what love is. He starts with that word know. And I find it fascinating that he ends with the word show. Because isn't that always the movement of love? It's to move from, from knowing about it to showing it. That's always the movement. If you are here and you are a follower of Jesus, the idea is that it always moves from what we know to what we show. And so it starts today. And I told you, we're gonna put opportunities in front of you to exercise and put this into practice. And so today is that first opportunity. And the way, the opportunity that we have today is kind of simple. We want to kick off this Be Rich initiative by giving away a ton of money. That's the bottom line. We just wanna pour out a ton of money on our local nonprofit partner organizations who are in the communities surrounding all of our locations right now doing extraordinary work and we wanna come alongside them and we just wanna dump money on them and say, let this money help you do what you're already doing great even better. So that's the bottom line. We wanna go and we wanna to give today so that we can give more money away to our partner organizations. And so what I'm gonna ask you to do is kind of simple. I'm gonna ask you to give today. I'm gonna ask you to give a one-time gift. Not gonna ask you again. It's not gonna keep coming up, all that kind of stuff. One-time gift today. Just give a one-time gift today. 
And every penny that you give today to our Be Rich initiative goes to our partner organizations. Not one penny goes to our church. Nothing goes here to our church. We are not done. Here's how you can give today. It's so simple. So simple. When you leave today in the atrium on all of our locations, it doesn't matter where you are right now, you'll see some stations that have white balloons. Um, and so you can go there with a credit card, debit card, check card, whatever. So that's white balloons. Green balloons, you can give cash or check. Um, and so there's also in your programs at all of our locations right now, um, you got a little envelope if you want to put your check in there or cash, and you can go and drop it at the green balloons. Um, that's great. Um, Easy, very easy ways you can also give through the LCBC app website or the easiest way, Jenny and I, this is how we gave earlier today, so simple, is you can just text LCBC Be Rich to 77977. It takes probably 45 seconds, at least that's how long it took me. Um, so anyways, LCBC Be Rich to 77977. I love what God is doing at this church. And I love the way that so many of you are standing arm in arm saying we wanna be rich in good works. We don't just wanna know a bunch of things about the love of God, we wanna show it. We wanna show it. And here's our opportunity. So may you go from here and may you be rich in good works and may your love be easy to see. Have a great week. We'll see you next weekend.